Hello everyone, welcome back to Too Sweet MTG and welcome to another Commander Deck Deck. In today's video, we are looking at Niv Mizzet Perun. It is blue, 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 red, red, red for a 5 5 legendary creature, Dragon Wizard. It has this spell can't be countered and flying. As well as whenever you draw a card, Niv Mizzet Perun deals 1 damage to any target. And also, whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. Niv Mizzet Perun is one of the strongest spells matters commanders out there. Its abilities are super strong, especially in Commander. Let's start with that top ability. This is why a lot of people will be here. Pinging any target whenever we draw a card is obviously very good, and the fact it combos with a bunch of things straight off the bat is going to be great. But to juice that ability fully up, we're going to be running a bunch more card draw in the deck. Firstly, they'll help us find our combo pieces, but secondly, they'll turn Niv into a machine gun that can either take out our opponent's creatures or our opponent's life totals. That bottom ability, that whenever any player, including our opponents, casts an instant or sorcery, we draw a card, is also unbelievably strong. Just adding the words draw a card to every instant and sorcery that we cast is nuts, especially when it ties in with the top ability of letting us throw around some damage as well. To take full advantage of this, we want at least 50% of the cards that aren't lands in the deck to be instant and sorceries. So ideally that means you need at least 30 as a minimum. Everything that's not an instant or a sorcery has to be really good or are things that the deck needs, so by that I'm mainly referring to win conditions, ramp, and cards that are just very very good or work with the commander. But do be diligent when you're putting the deck together. It can be tempting to just add another enchantment or another artifact that does something cool with spells, but let's be honest they won't do anything if you don't have spells to cast in the first place. Before we jump in, a quick note on how this video will work. We will be giving you all the sections that go into making the deck, and then we'll give you a bunch of cards as well as telling you roughly how many you need to run in each section. This way you can pick the ones that work best for you and your budget, so you can really make the deck your own. And of course, any card we mention will be down in the description below. While you're there, please give the video a like if you found it helpful. Normally we save how to win with the deck towards the end of the video, but let's be honest, a lot of the reason people are here are because of the combo potential of Niv Mizzet. As we've gone over, Niv's top ability pings any target whenever we draw a card. So if we combine that with abilities that make it so that whenever Niv deals damage to a player, we draw a card, well that's a combo. If we enchant Niv with Curiosity, Ophidian Eye, or Soul Bond it with Tandem Lookout, all we have to do is draw a card or deal an opponent damage with Niv, and we draw our whole deck and deal as much damage as we have cards left in our library. A note on that, Curiosity and Ophidian Eye are May abilities, Tandem Lookout is not, so if you combo off with the Lookout and don't take out all your opponents, you might deck yourself and lose. A way around this is to just play spells that win you the game when you have no library left. Things like Thassa's Oracle, Laboratory Maniac, and Jace Wielder of Mysteries. I would say that these are probably a more consistent way to go with it, as with one of these effects and the combo, you win no matter what your opponent's life totals are. The more fun way to go is instead with cards like Elixir of Immortality. With it, you can crack it to shuffle it and your graveyard back into your deck, so that this gives yourselves another round of pings. If you combine it with, say, Shimimir, it means that you can do this at instant speed and you don't even need to have them in play, you just need to have them in your deck and the mana to cast them. Again, this is probably not as consistent as like Laboratory Maniac, but in my mind, it is definitely cooler. Moving on now to some more familiar ground, and we have a little Spell Slinger package. These are cards that reward us for casting instants and sorceries. First up we have some token makers. There are plenty of options here, but personally I like Murmuring Mystic, Talran Sky Summoner and the Locust God, because they all make flyers. And while normally the Locust God doesn't make insects when we cast a spell, with our commander out and us drawing cards when we do, it definitely does. In a similar vein we also have Ominous Seas. This makes massive 8-8 Kraken tokens, so it's another solid option to look at. You then have cards that deal damage to our opponents whenever we cast an instant or sorcery. Cards like Kessig Flame Breather, Gutter Snipe and Urabrask are fantastic effects that are keeping our opponents life totals spiralling down. Ok, we've talked about them a lot, but the card section will be the biggest in the deck, and is where you'll find the largest portion of instant or sorceries that we're going to be running. First up we have our instant and sorcery speed cantrips. Super cheap cards that replace themselves and give us a nice bonus effect as well. If I'm honest, I would absolutely jam the deck full with these. As before Niv comes down, they can help sculpt our hand, but when Niv is out, 
they all have dealer damage to any target and draw a card tacked onto them as well. That is super busted for one or two mana, and honestly I would want as many of these as possible. We next up have some card draw spells with some added utility to them, in Is It Charm and Flame of Arnor. Both are great flexible spells that overlap with our other sections, while also having the baseline of drawing us cards and synergizing with our commander. We then have some wheel effects, cards like Windfall, Echo of Eons and Commit to Memory. They all discard our hand and then draw us a bunch more cards. But importantly, with our commander out, that's all turned into bonus damage to our opponent's faces, which we love. The only permanent bits of card draw I would consider in the deck are ones that just consistently draw us a bunch of cards. So you have things like Mystic Remora and Ristic Study. They get in because they'll draw us cards turn after turn. In a similar vein, you also have Archmage Emeritus and Teferi's Ageless Insight. These both basically double up any of the additional card draw that we get off of our commander. With the Emeritus drawing us cards whenever we cast any instant or sorcery spells, and then the Insight draws us additional cards whenever we draw a card that isn't the first card we've drawn at the start of our turn. If I'm honest, it's just so much of the deck it's gonna be great. Next up is our ramp section, and this will be slightly bigger than a regular deck, just because we have all that card draw, we're gonna have so much things to do on our turns. First up, we have Wayfarer's Bauble. This is just a great way of getting a land out of our deck to ramp us ahead. We then have our standard mana rocks with things like Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Is It Signet, and Talisman of Creativity. They'll be as solid in this deck as they are in any. Cards like these are just must haves in decks that don't have green. You then have spells like Thought Vessel and Decanter of Endless Water. They're both good ramp, but come with the bonus of letting us keep all the cards that we've drawn. On the topic of card draw, we also have Midnight Clock. A solid mana rock that after a couple of turns becomes another fantastic draw 7. We then have Storm Kiln Artist, a great dwarf that makes us treasure whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, perfect to let us cast another instant or sorcery. Then lastly we have some effects like Boral Chief of Compliance, Goblin Electromancer and Mocking Sprite. These all reduce the cost of our instant or sorceries, making it all the easier for us to cast them. Next up is our interaction section. We need about 8 bits to start here, and then we go up from there the more competitive that our playgroup is. First up we have Basilisk Collar and Gorgon's Head. If we put these onto Niv-Mizzet, Niv-Mizzet will gain Death Touch. That means that ping ability is now spitting out Death Touch, meaning we only need to deal 1 damage to any creature to kill it. That is super scary and makes Niv immense. Then in blue we have a bunch of effects that either destroy or exile a creature and leave something worse behind. Things like Pongify, Rabbit Hybridization, Cyber Conversation, and Reality Shift are all great efficient options here. Then in red you have some options that can hit a multitude of things, with spells like a Braid also destroying artifacts, and then you have Chaos Warp which hits anything. For some board wipes we have plenty of options in these colours. I like things like Curse of the Swine, Chain Reaction and Blasphemous Act, because they're really good and pretty cheap. But there's plenty of other effects out there, so run what works best for you. Next up is a little bit of protection. As we've gone over, our commander is a card drawing machine gunning win condition that people will try to get rid of. To stop that we first have good old Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots. They're classics for a reason, and they'll help protect Niv from any targeted removal out there. For anything else, you also have some cheap counter magic, with an offer you can't refuse, Swan Song, and Negate, all being really solid options. Remember with these, you're really only countering things that either stop you directly from winning, or stop your opponents from winning. So that's things like removal, board wipes, or combos. Okay, we have the base of the deck, let's go over some other dedicated ways that we can win the game. First up, we have another niv Mizzet this time the Firemind. This Niv importantly has the same ability as the Perun, so it means it's another combo piece and a nice bit of redundancy to just have in the deck in case the command attacks ever gets too expensive for us to recast. Next up we're going to buff up the amount of damage that Niv dishes out. Gerson Starn Kelamorph makes it 2 damage every time we draw a card, but with Oya Axanil Deepest Mind it deals 4 damage every time we draw a card. That is absolutely obscene, 4 damage whenever we do anything in this deck. It's just going to take opponents out, it's going to be awesome. We have another Oya next with Oya Pakpatik Deepest Epoch. This basically doubles up all of our spells. Again, it's a way of doubling up the card draw and the damage the deck is doing. Talking of doubling, you also have a card like Harmonic Prodigy. This copies the abilities of wizards, which, importantly, Niv is. This means we'll deal 2 damage whenever we draw a card, and draw 2 cards whenever anyone casts an instant or sorcery. You then have Psychosis Crawler, which makes each opponent lose a life whenever we draw a card, which as you might have noticed will cause a lot of life loss in this deck. And then lastly we have Mizzix Mastery. Overloading this late on is basically guaranteed to win us the game, as it will just recast every spell in our graveyard. The only downside with this card is working out how dead your opponents will be. 
Okay, rounding off the deck with some utility lands, and as it's just a two color deck, we have a decent amount of options that we can choose from. For some colorless options, we have Reliquary Tower and Riptide Laboratory. Again, Reliquary Tower just letting us keep our ill-gotten gains will be fantastic. And then Riptide Laboratory can bounce niv it back to our hand if it's ever going to be destroyed, which is just nice utility. For some blue effects, you have things like Castle Vantress, Mystic Sanctuary, and Ottawara Soaring City. Castle Vantress is just some bonus filtering. Mystic Sanctuary is a nice bit of recursion to bring back a key spell. And then Ottawara Soaring City is just some good interaction on a land, so it's basically free to run. Right, thank you all very much for watching. Do make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And let me know down in the comments if there's any other commanders you would like me to do a deck tech on, and I'll check them out. Until next time, I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.